I remember just punching that thing and punching that thing until it spat out my gun. That was awesome! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be gold! <laughs> Welcome back Spearfishing Down Under. This is part two of the trip I did a couple of years ago to Western Australia. Part one, we shot some really nice doggies. Before, a big great white wrecked the day for us. They did. Don't sit on the back. I've had a bunch of people message me on Messenger. I had a bunch of people message me through Instagram asking me what happened to that gun. Listen, we actually found the gun. I forgot to mention it. One of the boys was up in the top deck and he saw it float up about 50 meters away from where I shot the fish. I'm actually really excited to share with you what's gonna happen this episode. We started the morning after really traveling all the way through the night, a couple of hundred kilometers from where we'd been diving the day before. The target for the morning was pelagic fish. This is mackerel. This is wahoo. Wahoo are the second fastest fish that are in the ocean. And we target them similar to how we had been the day before with flashes and burley. Fortunately in this area, there wasn't as many sharks as there had been on the day before. Now, I know for all of us, we're all feeling a little bit apprehensive getting in the water, thinking about the great white shark that we'd encountered the day before. Listen, with spear fishing, the mental game is always a big part of diving. It is impossible to hold your breath when you're thinking about sharks and you're worrying about those sharks. So for all of us, we had to just switch off, forget about what we'd seen, and just get in and start diving. For me, first dive, I uh, headed down and I was just hanging at the flasher, looking, really looking for mackerel around me and just scanning the, the, the water around. And I, out of breath, heading back to the surface. And as I was heading back to the surface, I looked up, see a really nice wahoo swimming along the surface above me. Swung my gun into position, brought it up, Made sure I got a good shot on those fish and shot it right behind the head. At the moment I shot that wahoo, it went from swimming slow to 200 miles an hour as it just flew off stripping line for my reel. One of the most epic things about these Wahoo is that incredible change of speed from nothing to flying in an instant. Wahoo actually have really soft flesh. So when I was fighting that fish, I'm getting towed by it a little bit, but trying to be as light on it as I can. Started to bring it back in and you'd let it run, bring it back in, let it run. It was awesome to get that Wahoo in my hands. A really nice fish. to put that wahoo in the boat, we headed back up for another drift and we jumped back in again with the flashes, with the burley. As we are drifting along, I noticed a really nice school of mackerel come swimming underneath me. I noticed they were all really good fish in that 15 to 20 kilo mark. I dove down and when I dove, I was scanning through that school and I was looking for a fish with a big head and big shoulders. Mackerel, when you see a big one, they, they just stand out to you. I picked a fish that looked like it was around that 20 kilo mark shot it right behind the head. Fish didn't run much, heard it a lot. We put that mackerel in the boat and just kept on drifting. As we kept drifting, I dove and I was just hanging down near the bottom and I noticed a really nice pennant fish come in. Now these pennant fish are a part of the Trevally family. They are really beautiful striking fish, really silver sides but they taste unbelievable. Though I would say, in my opinion, they are the best eating of all the Trevally family. I headed up and I started pulling up that pennant fish from the surface. He was fighting really hard, but as he came into view, I noticed there was a huge potato cod following it up. Lee dove down and got some incredible footage of, of that potato cod almost eating the pennant fish. and then turn its attention on Lee. That was awesome! If that's not the 
Go on, that's got to be gold. He tried to eat you and change his mind. Now, you may be, have never encountered potato cod. I, I have many times encountered potato cod, had them stealing fish, had them eating my fish. But I've also had this incredible encounter with potato cod over in Western Australia a few years earlier. I was laying on the bottom and stupidly, I had a trout that I shot earlier clipped to the back of my gun. Listen, in this day and age, you don't do that. It was a dumb thing for me to do. But as I lay there on the bottom, I was holding my gun and from behind me, a big potato cod come and it grabbed a hold of the trout and half of my gun. I ended up holding on to the tip of the spear as the gun was pointing towards me and realized this is a dumb idea. I let go of the gun thinking I'm probably gonna lose my gun and grabbed a hold of that potato cod. I remember just punching that thing and punching that thing until it spat out my gun, headed to the surface and it chased me all the way to the surface. I was actually diving with Lee Mitchell at the time and he was nearly dying laughing as he watched from the surface this stupid potato cod trying to eat me and trying to eat my fish. After we landed the pennant fish, uh, the, we were at the end of the drift, so we headed back up again and started the drift. I was drifting with the flashes and I hadn't seen any fish other than big schools of surgeon fish and bait fish, so I decided just to dive and see what was on the bottom. We are still in quite deep water off the front of the reef, and as I got down halfway, I noticed a really big mackerel. This was the fish I was looking for. Big head, big shoulders. I picked it to be around that 30 plus kilo mark and the mackerel I love to shoot. Drifted down on it, try not to fin too hard, try not to go too aggressively at it. And he just continued to snake along the bottom and I picked a really good shot just behind the head. I was pretty deep, so as soon as I shot it, I was trying to put pressure, but that mackerel went really, really hard. As I headed to the surface, Lee was on the surface and he could see that that fish had pulled a fair bit of line off my reel, so he dove down with his rig line to see if I wanted to clip it onto my gun. Now, this is one of the real great benefits of diving together as teams, especially teams that keep an eye on each other and are working together, making sure that we land our fish. As soon as I, I got up, I, I started bringing that fish in as quick as I could. Now, this area hadn't been as sharky as other areas had been, but still, I was thinking, I don't want to lose this fish to a shark. These mackerel are so powerful. You see this fish just tow me through the water in such an incredible way. As I was bringing this fish to the surface, I could see a really big silver fringed whaler following it up to the surface. Now, these silver fringed whalers are big fish, big heads, big bodies, and love eating your fish. I brought it up as quick as I could. Fortunately, got it to the surface before that silver fringe ate it. When I got that big mackerel in my hands, I realized this is a really big fish, and it was all head and shoulders, and they're the fish that just weigh really well. Put it in the boat, we weighed it quickly, and it was around that 32 to 33 kilo mark. After I landed that mackerel, we'd shot a few pelagics for the morning and we we're really keen on just going and targeting some reef fish. We made a move, just a short steam in a boat, to an area the boys had dove previously. This area, the boys encountered a whole range of different reef fish, coral trout, Rankin cod, mangrove jacks, jobfish, a whole range of other really good eating fish. So the boys were really keen on getting some of those good eating fish to take home with them as well. First dive, Lee and I dove down together following Matt to the bottom. When Matt got there, he was surrounded by a huge school of small red emperor. Incredibly in Western Australia, red emperor uh, can be taken a lot smaller than they are in Queensland. Matt wasn't interested in the red emperor, but a really nice bar cheek trout swam straight through those school of reds. Matt lined up, shot that thing right in the eye. Cracking trout. I'm good. I could have stayed longer if there was some more big ones. Whilst Matt was putting his trout in the boat, a really beautifully marked manta ray came swimming underneath us. I bombed down really quickly to see if I could get close to it and was able just to touch it on the fin and it did a big loop. Beautiful animal. After the manta, I dove myself and I landed on another really 
fishy patch of reef. I noticed as I got to the bottom, there was some really nice Rankin cod. Now these fish are very similar to our purple cod. They taste just the same, but they act incredibly different. They are so dumb. I, I wasn't interested in Rankin this dive. I was trying to find if there was another big trout down there, and I was lucky enough as well to find myself a really big bar cheek trout. As I was sorting through my coral trout, it spewed up a little bit of bait, a little bit of fish that had been eating, and it attracted jobfish that started swimming down underneath us. Lee swum down and filmed these jobfish as they just swum so close. Listen, we'd shot a heap of really nice fish on this trip, and jobfish are great eating, but they weren't exactly the fish we were gonna target, so we left them alone. Next dive down. Again, really beautiful big rankins were swimming around underneath us. And that, I, I sometimes feel guilty shooting those fish with a spear gun because they are just so dumb. And these nice rankins just sat there and looked at me. Next drop, I breathe up and the boys were gonna dive with me and film. You know, this process of breathing up for me, it's not about filling my body with oxygen, but for those of you that aren't divers, it's about relaxation. To hold your breath well, relaxing is the key to that. And so I'm on the surface, I'm breathing up, I'm relaxing, making sure I just let my shoulders relax, my back relax, my legs relax, just preparing to dive. And the reason for that, when my body's relaxed, it uses less oxygen, which in turn means when I'm on the bottom, I've got more time before using up my oxygen. As you can see, as I head down, fin strokes nice and calm, nice and relaxed, making sure my body movements are deliberate and not too big. On this dive, as I got to the bottom, uh, I looked to my right, I saw a really nice Chinaman fish. Now, in East Coast, you're not allowed to spear them, but West Coast, you can. I wasn't targeting those, they're not the greatest of eating. I turned back to my left and I saw a really nice trout and a really nice coronation trout. I like to diversify. I don't like to just shoot all of the same species, and so I left that really good looking coral trout and picked a coro beside it. Threw the coro on the boat, and I did one more dive. And when I got to the bottom, again, some really nice rankins on the bottom. So these fish, again, are just so dumb. They just sit there and look at me. So we decided, hey, I'm gonna grab the pole spear out of the boat, and I'm gonna try and pole spear one of those rankins. Now, I haven't shot a hand spear for decades. So we jumped in the water, Lee gave me his hand spear. First dive, I come down, and landed on a couple of really nice rankins. My first shot at the rankin was just a complete air swim. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for me, those rankins are dumb enough that he came straight back. And I shot him right in the face. After I put the Rankin back in the boat, we, we decided we we're gonna probably just move down the reef a little bit. We we're gonna to move to an area the boys hadn't actually dove previously. They'd only sounded over it and seen huge amounts of bait and said it was really fishy. We weren't quite sure what to expect. We jumped in the water, we had flashes. We thought we'd do a little bit of burley and see if we'd see some mackerel, some reef fish. Just not sure what we're gonna see that afternoon. We'd filleted those dog tooth tuna and we were using the frames for burley. About 10 minutes into the drift, we were chumming, drifting, flashing, and I look down on the flasher and I see a really nice marlin just come swimming up to the flasher. Now, Matt was down at the flasher, but he only had a gun with no reel and no rig line. He called me down, I dove. So I'm over his shoulder, and that marlin just gave me a perfect shot. I love these little fish, they fight so hard. He was pretty injured, pretty hurt, but he still screamed off and took a bunch of line off my reel. I fought him in, we swam together, we followed him, and 
Let me just say, when you're fighting big pelagic fish like this, even though this wasn't a massive marlin, the principle is the same. You need to make sure as you're pulling your line, you're not getting it tangled around your legs, you're not getting it tangled around your arms, you're keeping yourself free in case that fish takes off again. Now, it's not just in case only the fish takes off again, but also in case a big shark comes and grabs it and drags you through the water if you tangled up. Now, as I started to get really close to the fish, I was preparing for how I'm gonna grab that fish. Now, if you ever shoot a billfish, let me give you pre-warning. Those billfish throw their heads side to side. The safest place to grab a billfish is from above and you grab its bill. You do that so that bill throws this way because they can't throw up and you're not gonna get smacked in the face by the bill. Now, all day, Lee had either been filming or swimming with a big gun, ready to shoot big pelagics. When we hopped in this spot, Lee basically put away big gun and decided that he was gonna chum just for a little bit of time. Now we get in the boat, we're all laughing, we're all excited, but Lee got the bottom lip going and having a whinge. How's that, eh? I'm your gun down. I know, I'm carrying that bazooka around all day, giving me this I decided to help you out and do a bit of chum, and it's like, rake, rake, Marlin. <laughs> Get hurt. After Lee's whinging and landing the Marlin, we decided it was probably time to continue heading towards home. We still had probably the 100 kilometre run during the night, and we're going to drive again through the night to head to the next spot we're diving the next day. After we got underway, I filled it that marlin and I cut it all up, prepped it up, and we cooked it up for dinner. Marlin and salsa wraps. Gold. How's it taste? Spot on. Beautiful, better if I had a shot it. Bye. Better if you had a shot it, no doubt. All right, though. I'll eat it. Beautiful. It's good. Marlin. Ooh, it looks good down there, boys. Honestly, over the last couple of weeks, I've been chatting to the boys in WA, and for all of us, we're saying the same thing. These were some of the best times of our life. So much fun, incredible trips, incredible fish, incredible food, incredible laughing together, and these memories just bring back so much for all of us. Now, listen, this isn't the end of it. There's another day to come, and the next day starts with absolute mayhem as we shoot some more epic big pelagics. Neutral! Ah, oh, pins! Pins! <laughs> Thanks again all of you for your support, for your comments, for your liking. But we ask again you subscribe, press that bell if you haven't already so you don't miss out on this coming episode in a couple of weeks time.